Smooth Soul is in touch radio. Life is just complex simplicity. I'll get out. Get ready, get ready. It's the second Wednesday of the month, and you're here with your host, Cheryl J. Cuso. Let's talk business with Cheryl J. Cuso. I'm so excited. You know what happens on the second Wednesday of the month when we are all up in your health business. That's what's going on today. So to our Facebook family, thank you so much for tuning in, as you always do to our radio station in touch news radio thank you for such an opportunity guess who's not in the house today but if you all (laughs) follow us you know who's in the house today so we are excited dr shanae davis is off with her sorrow yes did y'all hear that? He voice? left one here, though. <laughs> Whoa, she left. She left one working. That's what she did. She left one yes. working. Yes. We could just grab one of those fat pins over there. Yep. So the voice that you hear, and to those that are on Facebook, the voice that you are seeing right now is none other than Miss Shante Baker. So welcome. Hi. In Touch News family. Welcome to the show <laughs> Thank today. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. This is reality radio. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. You know, there's always a delay. Yes. But again, we're so happy to, to have you come in, and we're just kind of talk like girlfriends yes. today. It's an honor to be here. <laughs> good, good. So we were talking a few days ago, and we were talking with Dr. Davis about issues affecting us during the summer months and thought this would be a great topic. Even though this month there's still conversation with mental health, we can just never get um, enough of of that conversation, how we can help ourselves individually, our families, our community, and and even our children who are suffering tremendously from, from mental health diseases. But that being said... You're here. We're going to talk about the summer. Yes, because it's getting time for family reunions. Oh, and I just came off of mine in yes, Miami, the Magic and City. and vacation and just all sorts of things to do, you know, out in the sun. So we're going to be talking about summer safety. Well, for <laughs> those of you who are hearing this voice on the radio for the first time and you heard me introduce, I gave you her name. But let me tell you a little bit about her. I can let her tell, talk about herself. But if she's like me, most people don't like talking about themselves. But that being said, um, for those of you that don't know, she 
and I believe it's phrased something like this the highest of seven heels your girl absolutely F-A-M-U. <laughs> yes yes absolutely she is Look at us you <laughs> yes she is also a, a nurse practitioner so she comes to us we got to give kudos to, to dr. Davis because that's her seat and she wanted to make sure she had um a person that was well skilled and to be able to just jump in and, and talk about um, health and the, the issues that we wanted to focus on today. But what we have is 25 years, I believe, in the yeah. medical field, starting yes. as a registered nurse. Yes. And she's now a nurse practitioner. So you know, you all know this is a call-in show. The number is 813-444-9588. I, I like to say, oh, our first post is coming from L.A. Shout out to L.A. I like to say again, welcome to the show. And more importantly, to our radio listening audience, we have a nurse on call. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we have Credit a it. nurse on call and she's ready to, to answer your questions at this time we're just going to go ahead we're going to talk not just about summer safety but some of the things that affect our bodies so we're going to talk about heat stroke yes you're going to have a conversation and and talk about the importance of hydration correct we're going to talk a little about swimming yes our youth and how to protect um, our children and our homes right and that's really what spawned this whole conversation we saw this video that went viral i'm sure most of our radio listening audience saw it as well Mm -hmm. and that was the thing that just moved me just family summer correct sitting on the patio caged in pool kids playing in the pool correct there was an infant a small baby i want to say about 18 months was walking around inside of the cage pool okay Mm. and his ball fell into the pool Mm. within seconds and this was caught actually on the the family's home security Mm -hmm. system Mm -hmm. that father dove over yeah the cage the cage yeah into the pool Mm -hmm. i mean within seconds and rescued that child yes yes and I'm glad he knew how to swim because the thing about, you know, <laughs> families buying that. pools that can't swim, you know, I mean, you know, for decoration, I guess they figure they just going to fit in and cool estate. off. But I need y'all to know how to swim, you know, so, if you're going to be buying these pools to be able to. Oh, I like the way you, know, you said that. <laughs> so I, like I need y'all to know how to swim. <laughs> yes. To, buy a pool, to be able to protect your loved ones and, you know, others that, you know, may be visiting. All oh, right. that's very talking, important. So we're going to pan this over to you, and we're talking about summer and summer safety, and, and you want to just jump right in with heat and yes. what that means and how that affects us. Yes, so let, let's talk about let's heat. Talk you know, about um, we live here in, in Florida. Mm-hmm. Hot um, Florida. Yeah, hot Florida, <laughs> which, you know, and I mean, we get, you know, warmth year-round. You know, we don't, we, you know, we're kind of, you would think that we're kind of acclimated to it, but we're not because, I mean, because it happens year round. But, you know, the first thing that we have to talk about is the heat, you know, that's out there. I mean, it's, it's, and one of the important things that you need to remember when you're out in the heat is to hydrate. Yes. Okay. So we have to make sure that we're hydrating and the best way to hydrate yourself is by what? Drinking water, water. not alcohol, not fruit juices. Oh, but you're going to tell them about alcohol. Coffee. Yeah, because coffee, I mean, alcohol is a dehydrator. It is not a hydrator. It dehydrates you. So, you know, you guys that I have a story um, about a, you know, a patient that came in, he's out on the golf course and you've ever been out on the golf course they they have like these little you know they come around with the little beer cart right <laughs> you know and they drinking all their alcohol and everything okay. but yet and still he had heat exhaustion because oh. alcohol is a dehydrator it is not a hydrator so the first sign that you're dehydrated is thirst okay all right listen up closely because she's starting to give us some signs yes. and i want to make sure that we are paying attention because really this affects all of us yes it does and so we may think we know what to do or what happens but when it actually happens and you're faced with it you're like what is it i'm supposed to do right so take a moment out jot right. some notes down i know you can google all of this information right, right. but listen yes. listen attentively yes so the first the first sign is thirst so once you okay. get thirsty you, you're already dehydrated Okay, once That's you a good once point you to yes, point out. once you feel yourself, you know, you know, being thirsty, you're you're already, you know, dehydrated. Okay. So 
you know, the Take thing is, is just to, you know, now you need to rehydrate because basically what dehydration is, is you're losing more water than you're taking in. Okay. Awesome. And so you, or, or fluids be it. Okay. And we lose fluids by breathing. Okay. By right sweating. <laughs> yeah. By sweating, by urinating. And then if you're sick, you're nauseated, you know, you're vomiting diarrhea. That's another way that you can lose fluid. So those are the way that we lose fluid. So our bodies were designed. We're always in a homeostatic um, status. State. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in a break state. That down so, so it's always our homey, listeners yeah. will know what you're talking right. about. So we're we're always in a we're supposed to be in a state of homeostasis where you have the right amount of fluids Correct. in your body and electrolytes. But when you're losing that through our sweat, through urine, through normal things that we do daily, you lose that. And so you have to rehydrate yourself. And the best way to do that is with water. You know, I'm, I'm a firm believer of, of hydration and drinking water. It's something that um, I started so many years ago. And I know people will have a scale of what is the right amount of water. Mm -hmm. We can go and calculate all of that. Mm -hmm. But for me, I started with the, the eight glasses of water a day. All right. I still do it. Yes. I, yes. I, whether whether the weather changes or not, that's just part. It is right. so ingrained in me and right. it's such a habit that, I, and sometimes it may be ten. Yes. Yes. But for others, they may be able to get by on four. Right. But right. It's not even for me. It's just what I do. Right. Right. But the key is, if you are if you are in the habit of drinking water daily. But even in between that, mm -hmm. you find yourself being thirsty. Then you're not drinking enough. enough. So then you need to. So then you need to increase it. And there are at you know different times throughout the day or through life where you may need to increase. You know, Absolutely. if you're exercising, if you're out in the hot sun, you know, um, depending on what you're doing, you your body may require you know more fluids at different times. So we need to pay no. attention to our bodies. We need bodies. to pay, pay attention and, and to our also, bodies, absolutely. You also brought up another important point, too, in that of as we age. Yes. And so I talked about what is just normal for me, habitual for me. But you do notice each year things begin to, to change. And, and not only during aging, even with our diets. Correct. And so you start to make a change in your diet or you're cutting back and you're not doing this anymore. Um, even when we are no longer exercising the way we used to exercise. So what I'm hearing is pay close attention to the body and the signs that your Correct. body is, is, is exhibiting to Correct. you. Because as we age, that homeostatic state that I talked about, it kind of go, it goes down as we age. So the bar is reset. Okay. You know, as we age. So you got to find, you know, once you age, you got to find what is your, what, what is that state again? How do you so achieve that, that state? Balance. You have to get back to that balance. Correct. I like that. Correct. I like that. Correct. So you talked about two important signs as we were talking about um, um, hydration. And right. then you were kind of mentioning how the body then becomes dehydrated. Correct. So pay attention to that thirst. Yes. And But when you're thinking about thirst, and I was thinking about our children, and I mm -hmm. know you're going to, to touch on that as well, because mm -hmm. children don't really sometimes if they're uh, well younger children can't really mm -hmm. tell you if they're mm -hmm. thirsty mm -hmm. and right. so we as parents have to make sure that we're paying attention correct. close attention to correct. them because we correct. have to be the ones to make that determination all right so a way that you can tell your children a way that you can tell if they're dehydrated and you also can tell this for yourselves is look, look at the color of the urine i love it okay, okay. so, so you know your urine down. should look like a pale lemonade that means you're hydrated. You're well hydrated. If it's anything darker than that, you know, brown, uh, black, of course, is not very good. But any of those amber colors, honey, you know, those, those different colors, that means that you're not, um, you need to rehydrate. So with your children, you can look at the urine, okay? You can do that for babies. Um, for maybe, you know, younger than toddlers, infants, mm -hmm. um, there's a... You know, in the skull, right, the in, the, in the in the soft spot in the head, yep. it's sunken in. You know, the eyes can be sunken yes. in, and that um, are those are all signs of um, dehydration. So you have to pay attention to that. You know, in your all in right. your children. So we're gonna we're gonna reiterate that because that is that is very very important. And I like the way you you compare you compared it to urine to lemonade. Yes. So it's summertime. Yes. So think about a summer drink. Yes. Yes. And you can make that correlation when we're looking at our children to also pay attention to their eyes. The Correct. eyes tell us a lot. Yes. And the skin, the skin The skin, absolutely, well. absolutely. So if you, you know, you got good um, pinch back, when you yeah. pinch your skin, pinch it snaps back. back. That's that, that that's check a sign it out. of. She's showing us. Yeah, Do that's a sign of, <laughs> sign of great hydration there. Yeah, Yay. it just snaps back into place. So that's another good sign. <laughs> 
she, yes. she's given us some some good points so when your kids come in today or you're spending some time with your kids start watching their eyes and, and right. paying attention especially with the toddlers the yeah. soft spot and then the skin the test. skin yes yes okay. and the urine okay and the okay. urine well, that and and lemonade color yes yes and also you know it's a you know urine will have a very strong odor too not only the color but you know the odor is very strong if you're not well Tells hydrated you something's wrong yes absolutely <laughs> I tell you what, we, just as we're starting to get yeah. into things, listen. So that's a, a whole nother topic. We just need to know our bodies. Period. <laughs> I mean, you need to know your you need to know your body well enough that you can tell when little subtle things yes. happen because you can catch things really quickly and correct them. So, well, Shante, we are getting ready to take a commercial break. That little noise you're hearing in your ear is letting us know that the music is playing, and so Facebook family will get a chance to say hello to you. And, and um, she will do the same as well. So we'll be back after the commercial break. Remember, you're listening to Let's Talk Business with SJC. And sitting in for Dr. Shanae Davis today is Shantae Baker. Ah. See you after the break. So- with Kay's Kitchen, where we're cooking Chicago-style fried chicken and fish with the authentic Chicago-style mouth sauce. Come check us out at our new restaurant located at 3320 East Osborne Avenue in the Jackson Heights area. We have a brand new menu, which includes whole wings, catfish, pizza puffs, and much more. Call us at 813-368-5196. Again, that number is 813-368-5196. news radio right here remember this is a reality radio show you are welcome to call me and we have a nurse on call <laughs> shante baker is in the house she's sitting in for dr davis and we are already receiving some amazing information as we talk about summer safety i mean she just dove right in and talking about what we need to do and paying attention to the heat because we as floridians are faced with heat heat every day so again we say thank you we've got some first time listeners on our facebook page but we're going to jump right in and recap a little bit about what she said talking about summer safety but i think there's more that we need to talk about when it comes to that heat yes heat exhaustion yes yes so heat exhaustion is you know that can be very deadly Mm. okay and you know once you First of all, heat exhaustion is a medical emergency, okay? So if you think someone has heat exhaustion, uh, we need to be calling 911. Okay. We need to be getting to the nearest um, emergency room. So some of the things that, you know, um, like, well, heat, heat exhaustion, first of all, is it leads up to heat stroke. So I think we're kind of leading into heat stroke. But okay. heat exhaustion basically is so when you, you know, you're out in the sun or you're exercising visit vigorously and you start to feel that fatigue, you start to feel some weakness, you know, maybe mm. some headache, maybe some blurred vision. Um, those are some signs, you know, of course you're thirsty. Those are some signs, heat exhaustion, and those can quickly lead into heat stroke. Now, heat stroke are things where, you know, people are disoriented. I mean, they don't even have a clue as to where they are. To the, Confused, yes. Temp is above 104. 
And these are some of the things that, you know, probably if you've heard of these stories, you know, bad stories of kids, you know, left in hot cars. And so these are some of the these are some of the steps that they go through before they actually, you know, succumb to being in that hot car. So they're going to, you know, the temperature is going to start to go up. They're going to get thirsty. You know, um, then they're going to become disoriented. And, the, you know, it's not a good thing that they die, but probably one of the um, humane things about it is they probably pass out before they actually, you know, go over to the okay. other side. So okay. they do pass so out. They don't even know so, yeah, out. yeah. So, you you know, you 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 pass out. You, lo- you lose brain activity. You know, all organs shut down. You know, so heat exhaustion can cause a lot of even if you even if you survive, it can cause, um, you know, irreparable uh, uh, organ damage, you know, to your kidneys, to your lungs, to your brain. So I was listening to you talk about and giving um, our, our audience some of the signs when it comes to heat stroke. And as I was listening to you and, and you're starting to say in a person, say an adult mm-hmm. and the person goes and I'm sure you've got a story to, to back this up as well. And, oh, my gosh, I'm feeling a little lightheaded. But mm-hmm. we as adults tend to push that off. Right, right. You know, we'll say something like, oh, it's just the heat. Right, right. And before you know it, you've experienced even a little more than that. Right. Because I was at an event recently, and um, they I remember the, the, the people coming and asking for some cold water or cold towel. Mm-hmm. And this gentleman was probably at the early stages mm-hmm. of about to... Mm-hmm. maybe experience a heat stroke mm-hmm. and um, the paramedics were called and come to find out he was ill, he was a diabetic mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, by the time the paramedics got there, but what I noticed was he didn't take it very seriously. Okay, okay, okay. And and that's what I think mm-hmm. a lot of adults do. Mm-hmm. You know, I have these issues, it's just right. hot. Right, But right. it's more than just Right, hot. it's more than that, yes. So I heard you talk about, you know, what temperature, but if a person isn't there and, and they're not able to gauge what their temperature is, can you maybe speak to once you start to feel some of these um, signs, and, and whether it's a, a senior or an adult or, mm-hmm. or a child, mm-hmm. what, what kind of time span do you think we're looking at, um, Shantae, when you say when Shantae, when you say that? Because uh-huh. what are we looking at from the time someone is just going from heat exhaustion and before you know it, you could be so. First of all, stroke. you know when you when you you know note them to if you feel like they're heat exhausted. So the first things we can do, you know, if you're outside, try to get them into a cool place. Okay. We can try to, you know, pack them, like you said, they wanted cold towels, Mm -hmm. you know, wet towels, water, you know, just kind of dousing them. Now, if they don't recover from that, you know, you're doing that and then it's like, oh, you know, we're pouring this water on them, but they don't have a clue as to what's going on. Like they're, you know, they're confused and and it just, their skin is like hot and dry and it just seems like you can't get any response from them then that's when we, you know, we've gone to the point that we need to get, you know, some emergency assistance. But if they respond to, you know, bringing them into a cool mm-hmm. place, dousing them with water, kind of packing ice if you have ice, and, and, and they respond to that, then we're, we're good. We're good. We're, yeah, okay. we're good. <laughs> okay, so these are things that we need to pay attention to because you mentioned early at the beginning of the show family reunion and we had yeah. one um outside yeah. it was a, it was a beautiful day but it was hot mm-hmm. and so but and, and something that we as parents and family members have to pay attention to because the kids when they're outside they're just playing yes they're not thinking about the weather yes or heat stroke or heat exhaustion yes. or any of those yes. things they yes. just want to play and don't yes. want to stop or eat or drink yes and we always need to see about our young kids yes and our older people we always, you know, always, it's always mindful to make sure when you're at a family reunion or you're at a gathering that you're constantly checking up on your younger children and your older people because they're the most at risk um, mm-hmm. for, you know, the effects of heat, as well as people that have chronic issues, mm. chronic diseases. So those with high blood pressure, those with diabetes. High blood pressure because a lot of people are on medications that, you know, they're, one of the things that people take for blood pressure is a water pill. Yes. Okay? So when we talked about earlier about dehydration, about losing water. So those pills make you lose water. They're called diuretics. Mm-hmm. So we have to be careful with our, uh, with our people with high blood pressure because they're already losing water because Absolutely. they're on this pill. And then on top of that with the heat, which is making you lose more water and uh-huh. sweat, we have to really be mindful of them about, you know, about heat stroke and dehydration so, and heat exhaustion. 
So you constantly check in on them. I would, you know, good practice to me would be if you're having a family reunion, try to find somewhere where there's, um, near, you know, facilities, indoor facilities that are nearby. Because everybody's going to be outside, but, you know, maybe have somewhere where they can go in, you know, and take a breather, you know, so, every once in a while. And that, you know, bathroom facilities are close because they're, you know, they're urinating a lot. The other thing with, um, and with diabetics. So diabetics, because some diabetics they have decreased sensation on the skin. Okay. So they may, they the sun is shining on them, the sun is beating down on them, but they may not feel the effects mm. as quickly Good as point. you or me because of the because of the decreased um, nerve endings in the skin, okay. you know, being that some of them are diabetic, you, okay? And so you we have to be mindful of that because, you know, before they know it, they, they're in heat exhaustion or mm. heat stroke because they didn't, they didn't, Nothing alerted them that I need to maybe go inside and sit down because they didn't, you know, it, it's a delayed, you know, effect or delayed, okay. their touch sensation kind of decreases. Like, yes. Um, as we're talking about family reunions and people will be going on vacations mm -hmm. or having family reunions all the way up to September. Yes. Sounds like we need to have each family create a, a safety the plan. Yeah, a safety Absolutely. plan and have one person responsible for that. Absolutely. Because when we get caught up in the moment and having fun, Absolutely. we're not thinking about That's uh, right. those types of That's things. That's right. That's and right. So, okay, That's great. right. That's something I think we'll yes. add to our family yes. reunion Absolutely. checklist. Absolutely. So we've kind of talked about then the first thing that we need to think about as we experience our wonderful summer is what happens with this Florida sun and how that sun can affect us. So. Hydration is very, very important. So right. just make sure that we are paying attention not only to our bodies, but those um, those bodies around us. And that's a small window of time to go from heat exhaustion to possibly a heat stroke. Make sure that our family members who are taking medications, that there's ample um, fluids available for yes. them to, to hydrate themselves that as, as they are involved with right. the family. So one of the things um, Dr. Davis also wanted us to talk about when we were discussing heat strokes is how alcohol, and you mentioned a little bit about alcohol, but mm -hmm. how that plays a, a role and a part because if you're out and the family's out having a good time and you've got alcohol there and everybody's, you know, consuming it, but you've got this heat factor. All right. And could possibly be on medication. So that's right. three disadvantages right there. Yes. Yes. So... We have to be mindful of that. I mean, if you, you know, you may have to designate someone in the family to be the patrol. Okay. To be going around and, you know, like, okay, we got to lay off of patrol. this. You know that you're on, yeah. You know that you're, you know, you're high blood pressure. You know, you're drinking alcohol. It's hot out here. You know, I haven't seen you drink any water. You know, <laughs> okay. a rule of thumb for Safety myself control. is what I had to do because I wasn't a big water drinker. So what I had to do to make myself drink more water, first of all, if you, you know, you get in a habit of drinking water, water is very tasty, it's very, it's very good, nothing can quench your thirst like water. But what I had to do was I had to tell myself, okay, so if you drink anything besides water, say for instance, you drink an eight ounce soda, okay? okay. If I drink an eight, I'll tell myself, if I drink an eight ounce, so, eight ounce soda, then I need to drink twice as much water. Now that's okay. a practical yeah. point. Yeah, so I drink twice as much water, so guess what? Then you say, oh, you know what? I'm drinking too much water, so you know what? I'm not going to drink the other yeah, stuff. Yeah, you have to ask yourself. <laughs> I got to really myself want that up. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you're the type of person it, like yourself that you exactly. don't enjoy drinking a exactly, lot of water. Me, exactly. I can drink it all day. Yeah, now. and now I can drink it all day, but because awesome. I did that yourself. to myself, you know, I trained myself to be so... I mean, I nothing to me is better than water. So okay. I trained myself to do it, but that's a good, you know, maybe, you know, practice for people. Even if you're out... You know, at your family reunions, you're drinking alcohol or whatever. So you drink that four ounce glass of alcohol or that eight ounce beer or whatever. Then you need I to be like drinking that. twice as much water. I like that. That's a good rule of thumb. Yes. So whatever you're drinking, other than the water, the water. Yes. You drink twice as much water as as, much. as yeah as that as that what you're drinking. That would make you think twice. Yes. Yes, about it having would. a drink of yes. whatever yes. Your, your selection of drinking exactly. is. Okay, exactly. Okay, so she definitely <laughs> wanted us to make sure we talked about alcohol. And now we want to maybe discuss how this now affects those who are already dealing with high blood pressure. Yes. 
And so yes. we were talking about heat and how it affects the body. So if you've already been diagnosed with um, hypertension and diabetes and you're already taking medication, yes. you pointed out the importance of, and I'm beginning to hear the yeah. music in our ears. <laughs> this is now we are up to the half hour point of the show. And so thank you so much for joining us on Let's Talk Business with SJC. We are here with our special guest host, Shante Baker, and she has given us some very, very important information so that we can have a successful summer. So we'll be back after the break. Thank you for listening in. So Hi, this is Dale Day. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House, bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests right here on In Touch Radio. Hi, this is Dr. Veronica Walters, also known as Dr. V, the head of school at the Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call The Way, where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded, then maybe you need to check the way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based, project-based, and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your students a more excellent way at The Way. Okay, we're back. Thank you so much. We took a station to break. Remember the call-in number if we have a nurse on call and if you'd like to call in and ask a question, perhaps about your children, your family. Is that one coming in? Oh, I thought he was. Okay, he was over there controlling the board. So welcome back. Let's talk business with SJC. As I mentioned at the commercial break, we're here with Shante Baker, and she is really giving us some important information about paying attention to summer safety. Now, at the commercial break... <laughs> <laughs> Shante, you were saying you have to have a patrol in the family. Yes. I immediately went back to elementary school yes. to where we had safety patrols. Yes. But it's just that important. Yes. Yes. Even as adults. Yes, because, you know, with family reunions, we have all these different committees. You know, you have the planning committee, you have the, <laughs> the reunion committee, committee, decoration the committee. committee. We need to have a health and safety committee. All every right. every family should have that. Even if you had to, you know, have someone volunteer to come in, if you have you know, those family members that don't have medical knowledge, you know, maybe get someone, a friend of yours or someone to volunteer to come in. But or, you know, even if you just wanted them to come in and just do a little talking and, and yeah. you know, talk about safety and then and then they're out and then designate someone to, you know, manage it Take the rest of the of time. That. But There's yeah, probably yeah. a medical person in the family. Yeah. Already. Yeah. Find maybe. Nurse, find yeah. A doctor yeah. In the family exactly. And give them something to to cheer. Exactly. One of the other things we wanted to talk about is you're talking about hydration and how that affects, you know, our bodies and, and whether you are a person with any of the diseases we spoken of but let's talk about diet and what foods can people eat when it comes to making sure that your body is hydrated so if you're not one that wants to ingest a lot of water mm -hmm. let's talk about you can eat the, a lot of, of foods that are very yes. water dense like watermelon yeah oh, which that's we a love good one for the summer. to eat at the family reunions yes, and is. for the summer watermelon is excellent okay pineapple pineapple is good, good. yes very um has a lot of uh, uh water uh in that fruit uh cucumber is very good uh it's very hydrating okay so uh just some you know some things like that that have a high water content fruits and vegetables that have very very high water content and you can google i mean i threw some right. of them out there but if you google it can give you you know tell you the different ones that have the higher um water content and those are some Good things to also to to add to your diet so for summer safety one of the things we have to pay attention to because we're going to talk about swimming as well is that when you're doing your grocery shopping your marketing yes. 
take into consideration, pay attention to the fruits and vegetables that are, have a high, or as you say, dense water mm -hmm. um, content so that you can make sure you're um, consuming them yes. as well. Yes. And, and take some along with you, right. wherever you right. are. If you're right. going for a walk at the park, yes. you know, just make sure, just some common sense practices exactly. that, that we need to talk about. So we're talking about summer, family reunion, summer safety, hydration, mm -hmm. the importance of when you're not hydrated, dehydration. Now you're looking at dangerous things that could possibly happen to your body with heat exhaustion and heat stroke right so let's talk about swimming and and how this affects you know um, not just adults but mm -hmm. primarily our, our children mm -hmm. many of them are going to summer camps i was listening to a report on the news and they were giving a list of all of the organizations parks and recreation centers where kids can go for free summer lessons okay but every summer we still continue to see numbers increasing about our kids who um, couldn't swim mm -hmm. and ended up in a pool or mm -hmm. in a lake. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I remember I had a niece, and she saw that water, and she was so fascinated. She, she's, she's a grown woman today, but when she was young, I was a nursing student at the time, mm -hmm. and she, we were at um, one of the company picnics with my mom. Okay. And they had this lake, and she saw that water, and she just went for it. Yes, yes. And by the time we realized that she was gone and mm -hmm. you could just see the people running out there to, to drink, to, to pull her out of the mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. And she was, she was totally unconscious. Oh, wow. Totally unconscious. And, and I remember that was the first time um, while we were waiting on the paramedics, I actually got to do um, CPR on a family member who had just learned that going through one of my courses. Mm -hmm. And to, to just see her just do that first cough. Right, right. It was like, oh, my goodness. But oh, wow. Just that quickly. Yes, yes. She's alive today, thank God, with, with four beautiful daughters. Yeah. So I hope she's listening and paying attention to the things that I hope she learned to swim. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, but it's something so simple because children are fascinated by water. Yes, yes. Some of them, you know, it depends on your experience. So you have some, you know, that are very fascinated, and then you have the other end of the spectrum, adults that never learn how to swim because they were terrified. So... You know, you you have both sides, but it, it just it just underscores the need yes. for we need to learn safety about in and around pools and water. So that's the first thing is you know just starting with that safety, whether they be fascinated, then that can you know they can be fascinated, but they can be knowledgeable. Yes. And then for those that you know have that fear of going near water, it just it, it it's education. They'll need to be educated and just kind of um, introduce them slowly into water and how that it can be safe you know if you do things the right way and then they'll have an appreciation for it so you it know it seems to be affecting our african-american kids um a lot more i believe mm -hmm. um one of the things that dr davis was talking about was the y M C A, and mm -hmm. it was probably because of the data that they were able to glean from our children spending a lot of time at the pool mm -hmm. but it's happening a lot so well well, you have to, so, you know, there's a myth out there that, you know, black people can't swim, they don't like to swim, they don't be, like to be around water, and that is, it's a myth, but where it started was it started with segregation. So, the reason why you, you, you know, purport, you know, disproportionately have a number of African Americans, you know, compared to white children, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's like something like 64% yeah. of Black children, you know, don't know how to swim or they end up drowning. Correct. And um, it started with desegregation. I mean, segregation. So it started with, you know, segregation of pools where, you know, these in these cities where they built these built big um, community pools and then they weren't allowing black families and black children to come. So where were you going to learn to swim? You're right. You but know, I, you I can remember, too, growing up, speaking of swimming. Um, near um, Cyrus Green mm -hmm. and when the, the kids that couldn't swim we had some instances where the children climbed the fence it goes mm -hmm. back to that fascination okay, okay, of yes, water yes, you see yes, it, yes. you see people playing in it right. you don't know that you can't swim but you want to get right. in that water right. and right. they actually climb yeah. the fence yeah. twice yeah. to get over the second fence yeah. Yeah. to get to that water and that's where and so when you learn when you learn to swim you know, uh, any good swim program teaches safety as well. And so all of that should be included in any kind of swim program. And even with families, even if you don't, you know, you go near the water, you know, uh, and you have children, you should find a way to make sure that they're, yes. that they're being educated and that you're educating yourself about, you know, 
safety and dangers of, you know, pool, any kind of water. I mean, if you can't swim, I mean, any little body of water can drown you, you know, if, you, if you're not able to swim. Much. Exactly. It doesn't take much. It would be a bathtub, you know. Right. So, but just I think the more educated uh, people are about something, I think that um, it helps you to want to be more safe and want to take the precautions that you need to um, take, you okay. know, along with that knowledge. So when we're talking to our youth, it just comes back to education. Yes. yes. Comes back and, to and education. As, as, as homeowners and, 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 and people who, um, if you have a if you have a pool in your home, then you've got to mm -hmm. have some, some rules yes. for when family members come over yes. or guests come over yes. um, to be able to pay attention to that. So we're going to say basically what we're saying today is education. Yes. Yes. And, you know, you mentioned um, Cyrus Green. That's where I learned to swim. All I'm right. from Tampa. All right. I'm, yeah, I'm from Tampa, so I learned to, that's where I, so I would go to, you know, your summer programs, yes. your your uh, recreational parks had had uh, summer programs, and so that's where you learn to swim. That's they would take I, you to Cyrus I Green, to so I learned, I learned to swim there, and then I increased my knowledge once I started going to the youth sports programs at USF. So then I'm in an Olympic-sized oh swimming pool, gosh. then I'm learning to dive, and I'm I doing all that. that well. Yeah, yeah. So it's like so and, and, and it's just like baby steps, you know, you, you start out in a smaller pool, you know, just on the side, you know, your hands on the side, you learn how to kick, you're starting at first, yes. then you start putting your face in the water, and then the next thing you know, you're diving and you're flipping and you're doing all you know, all sorts of stuff. But I think kids as young as maybe nine months old, it could be younger than that, are learning to swim. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll give a shout out to my sister in law, Hey Joy, Sabrina. She was, um, she had my our eldest son, and he was about six months old. Mm -hmm. and she had an, a, a pool um, at her apartment complex, and I remember we came to, to pick him up, and the baby was in the pool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I almost had a heart attack. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was like, she's like, oh no, they just naturally learned to swim, and she just tossed his little yes. self in that pool. Yes. And he, it was just natural for yes. him, but I would have never made yeah. a decision like that. I remember saying, she'll never keep him again. Yes, yes. <laughs> But we love you and yes. thank you because that boy has been swimming from six months. Up. Yes, yes. And if you and if you plan that you know you're going around water and you know that your children can't swim, you know, but they want to be in the water, even if they're just walking in the, up to the ankles or they want to walk in up to the waist, they need to have floaters yeah. on. They need to have some type of float flotation device so Always that you know that yes. So that they're not going under, you know. So I'm just sitting over here now. I'm tickled because <laughs> I learned to swim at Cyrus Green Pool. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and then we were part of a summer camp program, and a couple of my siblings we got to go to USF, and that yes. was our first time seeing an Olympic size pool mm -hmm. I've ever seen. Yes. But here's the interesting thing about that: so we were we were taught to swim, and mm -hmm. we went for we could swim when we got there. Yes. But when I made it up to the high diving board. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so frightening right. at that time, and I could just go repeat yes. it over and over and over again. But today, yeah. I don't think you could pay me to jump that high. <laughs> I, I yeah. don't know. Maybe it was age. Fear heights, I'm, yes. I'm little, yes. I, I don't take as many risks. Yeah, me either. Me but either. I, I'm, I'm thinking and watching um, the Olympics and swimmers, and I'm like, I don't think I could do that again. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't worry, mm -hmm. I won't be trying to get yeah. anytime soon. But, <laughs> but a shout out to, to the University of South Florida and to the YMCA and all of those organizations that take the time to make sure that, that, that our youth are, are being trained to swim. Yeah. And they've also made it to where it's also very affordable. Yes, yes it is. So when we're talking about our youth, part of that responsibility as parents is to make sure that our children learn how to swim. Yes. Yes, and I think as they see more of us swimming, I mean, you had the, you know, years ago, you had the Olympic, the female, black female Olympic yep. swimmer. So um, I think as, as we see more people like ourselves swimming, it, you know, makes people want to, you know, get engaged, you know, so, engage and want to learn how to swim. So summer, summer safety, we've got people at the parks now. We've been watching... Um, Shout out to Coco, <laughs> the, the Wimbledon tennis match, and you can yeah. see everybody there mm -hmm. has containers of water. Yes. And you're in the heat yes. watching a heat exhausted type yes. of sports going yes. on. Yes. And you can see the, the, the perspiration going on, and, and they'll take a little break. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and speak to outside activities. We, we talked about the family reunion, but just in mm -hmm. general, being yeah. outside. So, other things that we can do to, so we, you know, we touched on, you know, being dehydrated, knowing 
how you're dehydrated. But some of the other things that you can do to help decrease your chances of of dehydration and just protecting your skin. So now we can start yes. going into protecting your skin because another myth Love is that it. black people don't get skin cancer and that we don't need to or wear don't tan. Yeah, or don't tan and we don't need to wear sunscreen or sunblock and that absolutely is not true. Well, let's just so, spell that myth right yeah. now. So another so things that we can do. If you know that you're going to be out in the sun, you know a lot of people like to garden. A lot of people are just sitting out, you know, watching um spectator sports. I'm a very big um buccaneer fan and okay. so I'm out there in that hot stadium with everybody else. Oh, bucks. Need to have a wide brim hat okay. or cap on. Covering of the head. Right. In fact, everybody getting getting together for your little family reunions. You know, you have the T-shirts, but hats. We need to get okay. hats made for the family reunion, Good okay? Point. So Good people point. can wear, like, the nice little, you know, uh, something that, uh, w- you know, with a brim that can cover your face, okay? Like so that. we need that. We also need to wear either a... And there's the music <laughs> yes. in our ear, as Shantae was telling us about. That's a good point. Family reunions. When you're ordering the T-shirt, order a hat. Too. Yes. We're going to take a commercial break. Thank you so much. You're listening to Let's Talk Business with SJC. I'm here with my co-guest, <laughs> Shantae Baker, and she's breaking it down. We'll see you after the break. Where does the time go? Your favorite R&B flavors. What's your flavor? Tell me what's your flavor. In Touch Radio. Hi, I'm Donald L. Dowry Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. One darn second. America since 2017 is suffering from a serious hiccup. 9-11 is seriously overused in a distasteful manner. Every day the cops are calling on an innocent, innocent person of color. It amazes me that America has come down to this. A person of color becomes a person of interest. Waffle House, the dorm, Starbucks is a few. This is not the lunch counters, sit-ins of the 1960s. 2019 harassed simply for being black and proud. Hold on one darn second. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. Pre-order my new book, Motivational Moments, at DLD28-2002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. Been in a car crash? Call Ricky. Don't know what to do? Ask Ricky. We will connect you with a lawyer and doctor experience in auto accident injuries. Call Ricky at 844-361-7425. After an auto accident, you have 14 days to seek medical attention. You may be in pain. So call Ricky. Ask Ricky for your best options. 844-361-7425. Call Ricky. Ask Ricky is a legal and medical referral service. The lawyers in our network pay to receive referrals. Okay, Facebook family, and we are back from that commercial break. We are here. Let's talk business with SJC. So happy to have in the radio studio today, Shantae Baker, and she is doing exactly what Dr. Davis promised us that she was going to do. And that was a breakdown summer safety. And you, you are pulling out some, some great points that we need to pay attention to, particularly our youth and our seniors. We were just delving into that whole aspect of being in outside activities, whether you're at a spectator sport or you're at your family reunion. There are just some common sense things that we need to do. And she was just starting to talk about the care of our skin. So we talked about the family reunion shirts, the importance of hats. And so now we're going to turn it back over to her, and she's going to talk to us um, about skin cancer and some of these myths that we as African Americans don't believe affect us. Uh, Right. And again, knowing our own bodies. We kind of started out with that. So that, you know, the same thing goes for skin cancer and recognizing uh, you know, skin cancer. Black people can get skin cancer. Yes. Okay. The most common place that 
you know, black people will get skin cancers on the bottom of their feet, but that doesn't mean that you can't get cancers Somewhere other places. Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, we're, so you're looking at your skin every day. So, you know, say you have some little spot on your skin that you, it's been there for years. You're like, oh, that's just a birthmark. Yeah. But, you know, you've been watching it and you're noticing that, you know, it's kind of changing shape a little bit. Yes. Or it's painful or it changes colors. That's right. Or so it's like the ABC, itching. So. Yeah. So those are some things you need to be concerned about and you need to, you know, follow up with either your, you know, primary care physician or, you know, preferably a dermatologist. But, you know, your primary can refer you to a dermatologist if you, you know, you can't go straight to a dermatologist because of, you know, your insurance or whatever. But that is something where you need to, you know, see a dermatologist and have them watch that, you know, because... One thing about skin cancer is that it is curable, but it has to be, you know, like other cancers, it has to be caught early. So okay. that's why we have to be diligent diligent in watching, you know, our skin and knowing our bodies, okay? Paying now, attention. yes. Now, as far as sunscreen and sun, now there's a difference between sunscreen and sunblock. Oh, I like that. Did anybody know that? Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. So there's a difference between sunscreen and sunblock. So what's the difference? Okay. Well, well, think about when you lived in the house. You had a screen door. Okay. What did you had a you screen door and you had a and you had a door? Correct. You know that closes Correct. that. You know it blocks everything out, right? But we could see out of the. Screen but you, door. you could see out of the screen door. So that's your sunscreen, and then you have your sun blocks. Sunscreen is meant for when you're only going to be out temporarily. Okay. So sunscreen is good practice for even driving in your car. People didn't know that you should have sunscreen on when you're just, so if you're in Florida and you're driving your car, yes, the side windows are tinted, but that windshield is not tinted, okay? And if you know that you're going to be, you know, driving out in your car for maybe 30 minutes or more getting from place to place, you need to have on a sunscreen. Recommended SPF is about, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20. I'm guilty. Yes. Yes. Do not apply it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, you know, we hear this term, black don't crack. Well, but you got to protect that skin to help it not crack. And those are some things that we can do is, you know, wearing our sunscreen. Now, your sunblock is designed for when you're going to be out hours. This would be for your gardeners. If This would be for people at the beach, you know, at your spectator sports, out fishing, any 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 activity that you're doing outdoors, the family reunion, any activities that you're doing outdoors where you're going to be out there for, you know, an hour or more, it is a good idea to wear sunblock rather than sunscreen. Did y'all hear this? <laughs> I know for a fact that there are a lot of people in that category with me, and we don't really think about sunscreen on a routine basis because we are in and out of our, our vehicles. We are constantly running. Mm -hmm. I think that's the first time I've heard that broken down about the windshield. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because we do. We've got tinted windows, and we think we're semi-protected, or we're just going to be out for a minute. And really what happens is that minute turns into yes. easily yes. an hour. Yes. And you're sitting in this Tampa traffic so you're talking about sunblock. You also talked about um, the importance of SPF. So when we think about that, again, when it even comes to picking out your shades, mm -hmm. um, that's another point, protecting mm -hmm. our eyes. But mm -hmm. what is that magical number when we are purchasing? So, um, the lighter, so the lighter your skin, the higher your SPF should be. Okay. Because you need more coverage and more protection. Now, we as people mm -hmm. of color, we have that nice melanin which does give us some us. yeah which does give us some protection but that's a false sense of security okay we still need to wear a sunscreen and or sunblock if we're out you know in the sun because that sun beaming down on you the melanin can't protect us from that so y'all are going to appreciate this she's starting to sound like dr davis now <laughs> but but those are true facts and and they're facts that affect us tremendously yes the higher the number, yes. the lighter the skin. Yeah, the lighter the skin, the higher the number should be because it, it because it uh, the number uh, describes the amount of protection that you're getting. And so yes, so the lighter the skin, the higher the number should be. And absolutely, no people of color should be in tanning beds. <laughs> absolutely not. We don't need we don't need 
you know, tanning beds. Just wait until the, you know, wait until the summer comes. You're going to, you know, darken up if you need to be a little bit darker than what you are. Even with a sunscreen or a sunblock on, you'll get a nice, you know, more even tan and not, you know, not burning. But we also can burn. We yes. also can burn. So you got to be careful when you're out in the sun because we can get sunburn as well and sunburn is just like any other kind of burn i mean they can serious. be pretty they can be pretty severe yes so yes. you know whatever you need to do to protect your skin you know when you're people that are you know that are out gardening you know if you don't want to wear uh tank Mostly. tops and things like that you need to wear loose fitting um clothing that can kind of you know cover up some areas yeah you don't want to be all covered up because you don't want to dehydrate yourself but, you know, just loose fit clothing, you know, where a breeze can kind of blow through. You're out there and you you know, have your hat on to cover your face. Uh, the sun it's, the sun gets its hottest around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. So if you need to do any kind of, you know, gardening or any kind of activities outside that don't require you to be out there, you know, after 3 o'clock, try to do them early in the morning when, you know, when the sun is first coming up. I agree part-time horticulture so yes to, to scratching the dirt <laughs> exactly exactly great great points great points so when a person and you're you're talking about skin cancer and, and you're seeing um whether it's a mole on your skin and like you say we are quick to say oh i've had that all my life that was a mm -hmm. birthmark mm -hmm. what we need to do to pay attention to and um i remember uh, being at a workshop with dr green over at the moffitt cancer center and, and one of the things he began to point out is he showed on the, the screen different mm -hmm. sizes, and they are. I mean, you can look at something so very, very small, mm -hmm. you really think there's nothing to it. Correct. And, but, and then the, but then the size changes. Yes, it or does. Or the shape changes. But you've got to start paying attention to the size. Correct. And Correct. So, um, And that's what we have to do. And it goes back to, to education. Right. And uh, we may think it's something simple, but you look at it, you pay attention to it, whether it's on your face, your neck, your arm. Oh, wow, that mold's getting a little bigger now. Right. And it's, so it's a general rule to to um, check your skin once a month. You know, pick a day of the month. We need a safety patrol yes. person in the family. <laughs> so pick a day of the month that you say, you know, I'm going to do my skin check. And if you need to, take pictures. Because you look at your skin, you can look at your skin and you can say, hmm, it looks like that may have gotten a little bigger. I don't know. It may be the same size. But if you have a picture of it. You know, you can tell if there's, you can also tell if there's been, you know, been a change. But if you're, if you, but if you're in very in tune with your body and you're looking at something once a month, then it kind of gets you used to what it's supposed to look like. And if there's a change, mm -hmm. then you should be able to catch it. And there is, I'm hearing the music again. <laughs> Another commercial break. That is the third time. We're talking to our, our programmer over here. It <laughs> seems like as soon as we get into a great conversation, we are either stopping for a commercial break or we're coming to the end of the show. And oh, so wow. we want to <laughs> take this end of the show already. <laughs> we want to, to take this opportunity to, to say thank you. Thank you for, for sitting in for Dr. Davis. And um, you are on point in breaking down a lot of the myths, but you've given us a lot of great information when we are talking about summer safety. And one of the things we really need to talk about is having someone in that family designated in, yes. that, in that role and in that responsibility yes. and, and dispelling a lot of myths. And so you'll be able to catch the show in its in entirety on n-touchnews.com. And we look forward to seeing you back. There's a lot of the information going on. We'll post some of those activities on our thank you posts on our website. But again, we thank you to those of you who are on Facebook. Thank you so much for spending your lunch break with us. We appreciate you. Thank you for your, your questions. If we didn't get a chance to answer them, you have to answer all alone. Call into the show. We had a doctor, on, we had a nurse on call. But again, we say thank you. Dr. Davis, enjoy your trip. Yes. Enjoy your trip. We look forward to having you back. And until then, this is the show that will be all up in your business. This time, your medical business. Thank you. Signing off. Thank you.